What do sea slugs, lettuce, and potato chips have in common? Clearly, not enough. However, they do have one important, useful, and beautiful thing in common. The geometries of these surfaces may all be non-Euclidean. So what does that mean? Well, we can find out easily, but it's going to take some imagination. Take your normal plane. Maybe you imagine it as a table that goes on forever in all directions, or as one big sheet of graph paper. There are five basic things you've probably taken for granted about this plane. Around 300 BC, Euclid laid out five postulates. In mathematics, a postulate is something you assume to be true. You might think that math has a lot of rules, but postulates are the fundamental rules, and using only the five postulates laid out by Euclid, one can prove any other rule or statement of Euclidean geometry. The first four are to the point, obvious, and classy. First, you can draw a straight line between any two points. Second, any line segment can be extended indefinitely in a straight line. Third, given any straight line segment, a circle can be drawn with the segment as the radius and one of the endpoints as the center. Fourth, all right angles are congruent. And here's the fifth. Given a line and a point not on that line, there is exactly one line through that point parallel to our first line. In other words, there is exactly one line through that point that will never touch the other when extended infinitely. The thing is that this is much less elegant than the other four, and because of this, mathematicians have sought to prove it using the other four rules, which would make the last rule not a postulate, but a theorem. A theorem is a true statement in mathematics that can be proven using postulates and other theorems. This fifth postulate is used to prove many theorems, but one thing that will become important to us is the theorem that states that the measure of the angles of any triangle always add up to 180 degrees. Since we've taken these rules for granted, let's see what happens if we try to imagine a plane where one of them isn't true. This is significant because if you are able to imagine a plane where the first four postulates of Euclidean geometry are true but the fifth isn't, you would conclude that the first four rules don't result in the fifth. This would prove that the fifth rule is a postulate for Euclidean geometry. Geometries that follow the first four rules without following the fifth are called non-Euclidean because they don't follow all of Euclid's rules. Let's now go back to thinking about a plane as a table or a sheet of paper that extends forever in all directions. Just like that is a model for Euclidean geometry, there are many different models of hyperbolic geometry people come up with, but this is roughly the shape most of them represent. All we have to do to see how this is non-Euclidean is treat the surface like a mathematical plane, the same you would do when drawing a graph on a piece of paper. One, two, three, four, five. This doesn't really work. If I drew the same straight lines on a regular sheet of paper, they clearly intersect. If you draw a triangle, clearly these angles don't add up to 180 degrees. They add up to less. This is the model of non-Euclidean geometry called hyperbolic. Even if all this seems abstract to you, I'm sure many of you have come across hyperbolic geometry in your life before, without even realizing it. One application of hyperbolic geometry in art is in the work of Escher. In these, he uses a different model of the hyperbolic plane. Plants and animals take on forms reminiscent of hyperbolic geometry. Sea slugs, lettuce, algae, shells, snails, kelp, Nuda branches, jellyfish tentacles, coral, and many other surfaces in nature imitate the hyperbolic plane. Which is to say, if you treated it as a plane, it would satisfy the first four rules without satisfying the fifth. Complex networks like computer networks, technological networks, brain networks, and social networks like internet seem to follow hyperbolic geometry. It also has applications in turbulence and in Brownian motion, which is super cool. And food. Pringles actually have to do with hyperbolic geometry in a sort of roundabout way. They are shaped like hyperbolic paraboloids. If you were to zoom in on a single point on the hyperbolic plane, the area around it would look like a Pringle. One thing that's really important to realize is that mathematics seems to be completely abstract, but instead it has many applications to the real world, but sometimes it takes us many years to recognize it. My point is that you shouldn't go on thinking we live in a purely Euclidean or purely non-Euclidean world. Quote Henry Poincaré, one geometry cannot be more true than another, it can only be more convenient.